Welcome to Fast Food Horror. In this episode, entitled The New Kid by E. J. Miller. The only thing worse than being the new kid is being the new kid a few months into the school year. Friendships have already been made. Cliques have been formed. The entire social hierarchy has been established. You have no idea what the drama is and who not to associate with because of their past or very recent flops. It's a social minefield where one false step could make you the new joke and you have no idea who is safe and who is not. Unless, unless, you just choose not to associate with anyone at all. Stay off all radar to escape everyone's attention. Such was my life two weeks into my junior year in my new home at Washington Irving High School that November. I had a routine. Attend my classes. Try not to get anyone's attention, which included the teachers, and just go home. My grandpa would pick me up at the end of 8th period on his way back from work in his rust bucket of a work truck, so that left me to just take the bus into school in the morning. That rolling hellscape. The bus would pick me up at the corner before the sun could even be bothered to come up each morning. I'd make my way past the driver, who never said anything to me, thank God. He just sat there blankly looking straight ahead. I'd make my way down the dark, red emergency lit aisle to a seat towards the back, passing rows upon rows of faces who never looked up to even acknowledge my existence. Ah, the way of teenagers. I'd throw my bag into an empty seat and drop in after it and curl up, scrolling through TikTok and Instagram until we got to school, then get off the bus and start my day. This was my routine every day for two weeks, until that Friday. It was pouring and cold out, a dreary November ice shower, another degree or two lower, and it would be snow. All I wanted was to make it off the bus without getting drenched. As soon as the bus stopped and the doors opened, I made a mad dash to the front of the bus, then made a beeline to the front doors of the school. Halfway through my sprint down the walkway towards the school doors, I realized I left my backpack on the bus. I frantically turned to go back to my bus, almost losing my footing on the wet pavement as I spun. It wasn't there. The big yellow bus I had just left not more than ten seconds ago was gone. Not only wasn't the bus there, none of the other students were behind me. I was the first one off. There should have been 40 other students filing into school right after me. But it was just me, standing in the rain. The bus didn't pull away. I looked up and down the road. Nothing. I stood there in the rain, wondering where it could possibly have gone. When I felt a tap on my shoulder, I turned to see the old security guard looking at me with concern. You okay? He said in his graveled bass. I... My bus. It was just here. I, I left my bag on it and... Okay, let me help, he said. Happens all the time. What bus number were you on and I can call it back? Se 72, I, I croaked out. 72? Are, are you sure it was 72? Yeah, I replied. 72. I've been taking it for two weeks. Kid, that's... Not funny, he said. What bus number were you on? 72, 
I'm not sure why that would be funny. He cut me off. Listen, he said with more speculation than concern. Maybe you got your numbers flipped. Maybe you're a little confused. It couldn't be 72. N no, it was 72. Picks me up every morning. I'm not wrong. Well, it couldn't be, he replied, with a little more sternness in his voice. And why couldn't it be, I asked, with the annoyance of having lost my bag and now standing in the freezing rain. I'll tell you why it couldn't be 72. <sighs> he let out a long sigh. Ten years ago, there was a rollover accident. No one knows what caused it. Bus full of students. No one survived. Not the driver. None of the passengers either. It was a huge town tragedy. Bus 72. They've never reassigned the bus number out of respect for those lost. That's why it couldn't be bus 72. Unless <laughs> you rode in on a ghost bus. <laughs> yeah, that must be it.